Good morning. Two things. One, if you have cell phones, please turn them off. <laughs> uh, the second thing is he is risen. He is risen indeed. God, we owe it all to you. We owe it all to you. If you're able, please stand and join in the reading of our call to worship. Friday, they laid our Savior in a lonesome and cold tomb, and the world went dark. The death seemed to have won the day. But today, resurrection has come, and resurrection changes things. Today, the stone is rolled away. Jesus is no longer in the tomb, and we have been set free. Christ has risen. And death has lost its sting, and the grave has no victory. Today, let us weep no more. Let us cry no more. Come, let us rejoice and be glad, for he has risen. All Christ, Christ the Lord, Lord is risen today. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Our Ashe, Amen. and our men. Yeah. Our opening hymn is Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Amen. 
our morning prayer. Most holy and loving God, on this Resurrection Sunday, we lift our voices and say, Hallelujah. We come before you in this worship service and ask that you anoint us with resurrection power. We seek your anointing this morning because without it, we will learn too much on our own understanding and we will fall prey to, hear, to fear and doubt. And the power of resurrection cannot live where, those, where these beasts habitate. As you raise Jesus, raise us now out of the complacency of our lives that shroud us in tombs of mediocrity and procrastination. Bless this service and bless us so that when we leave this place guided by your Holy Spirit, we will be dedicated to living resurrected lives, empowered by your love and by our faith in our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. All these things we ask and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There you'll find joy, you'll find peace, you'll find happiness and a rich reward. I was glad, I don't know about you, but I was glad when I was invited, when they said, come unto me into the house of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this Resurrection Sunday, amen? Amen. Had it not been for God, where would we be? We don't know, but I'm so glad we woke up in our right minds this morning and they called us to be here together. Amen. Amen. And as we come on this Resurrection Sunday, we come to celebrate our risen Savior. We come to celebrate that he brought us together today. We come to say thank you, Jesus, for just one more day. But in that we have been given this day, We've also been given something else. We've been given this wonderful opportunity to humble ourselves and come before the throne of grace. So before we read our corporate prayer of confession together, let us now go into our private chambers and ask God for forgiveness for those sins we dare not utter aloud. As we hear our response played underneath, hear our prayer, O Lord. Together, let us read our corporate prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Together, Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. Still they hound us, sometimes making us cower in the shadow of your victory, believing not in the empty tomb, but fixated on the blood-stained cross. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and refuse to comfort those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you gifted to us, asking only that we tend to her with love and care. Forgive us, God of grace and mercy. Resurrect us from the throes of the walking dead and raise us anew in the power of new life with a new purpose. Raise us up and wash us with your anointing spirit so that on this day 
we might become your instruments of peace in a world that needs to know that today Christ has risen. Hear this, our prayer, and renew your Holy Spirit within us. In our risen Savior's name we pray. Amen. Beloved, Jesus came and lived among us. He cried for us. He laughed with us. He washed the feet of his disciples to show them what service looks like and what it means. But more than anything, he was put on a cross. And to prove that the world does not win, but that God has the final say, God rose Jesus on this day that we celebrate. So in the name of our risen Savior, I now proclaim that our sins are forgiven. Let the church say amen. amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thy knee to us. The church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen, amen. one more time. Amen. amen. Good morning again. Good morning. Our announcements for the week. Please note our 85th anniversary is fastly approaching, and we hope that all of you are excited as we are knowing that this will be a day of celebration, affirmation, dedication, and fellowship. Our anniversary committee is headed by Elder Dwayne Grayman, and he is planning a special day for us so that we hope, we hope that you may set May 5th aside in order to spend it with your Church of the Master family. Church of the Master Presbyterian women continue to meet the third Tuesday of each month from 1 to 2.30 p.m. The next meeting will be Tuesday, April 16th. All the Church of the Master Presbyterian women and all others who would like to join are invited. The conference call information is 978-990-5033 and the access code is 118261. For further information, please contact Elder Joy C. Brooks at 212-926-7910. For those worshiping on Zoom with us, on the Zoom or YouTube, please leave us your contact information so that we can reach out to you. Our church contact information can be found on the back of this bulletin. And if you are considering becoming a member of the Church of the Master, you may contact us and someone will reach out to you. You can also contact Reverend Palmore at R-E-V-G-E-N-E 14 at Gmail, Rev Jean at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Um, all right, excuse me, one second. I'm, I was wondering how bad the Easter lilies was gonna catch you. <laughs> I can't deny allergies, it is what it is. Okay, uh, our ties and offering. Option one, text given. Individuals can use their cell phones to text to this number, 732-56, in the message part, write Church of the Master and the amount you want to give. Then, then you will, they will send you a link and then you do a normal text. Amen. Option two, the online portal, round. Once you click the link below, you will follow instructions that will lead you to where you can give. And our tried and true option, number three, the final option, mailing in your tithes and offerings to the church. No matter what the option one chooses, all gifts, no matter the amount, is welcome. Amen. We have one more announcement. Um, starting next Saturday at 12 o'clock, not 12.01, not 12.02, but 12 o'clock sharp, Elder, Elder Dwayne Grayman will be leading a workshop, a voice, what is it? A, a, okay, a voice training <coughs> workshop. 
So please come out. Please come out. But please also note that he is very, very serious about his training. Okay, he don't want no lateness and he don't want no talking. <laughs> Just listen. Brother. Let the teacher teach. Thank you, Dre. <laughs> Let the teacher teach. Okay. Um, I think that's all the announcements I have for today, Reverend. Good morning, church. Good morning. Yes, Dwayne. Gotcha. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a big one. Okay. Oh, please forgive me. I'm also I'm used to everybody being home. Will our visitors please stand and introduce yourself? Okay, welcome to the Church of the Master. Please let us know your name and church affiliation. Please forgive me. Yes. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Glad you're here. Please don't let it be a last time. Amen. 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 Spain. Spain. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Hey, God man, bless thank you. you very much for coming. All right, look like everybody else's family. Okay. We're so glad that you chose to be with us today. You could have been anyplace else, but we're so glad that you, uh, your heart led you to be here with us. So thank you all the way from Spain. And whenever you're back in the city, always know that on Sundays, the doors of Church of the Master are welcome to you. And from our brother and sister from the neighborhood, we're glad that you chose to be with us. Yes. Um, know that um, we're here for you. Um, you have my email, it's in the bulletin. If you wanna reach out to me, always feel free to do that. We just hope that this won't be your last visit again, amen. And to all our brothers and sisters who are online today, um, I got some emails or text messages this morning from folk who are um, in Springfield, Massachusetts who are gonna be visiting with us. Uh, maybe my baby sister in Chicago, I don't know. Um, but to all our folk who are online, who are on Zoom and on YouTube, we say welcome to Church of the Master. You could have decided to be someplace else. You could have just stayed asleep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you decided to be with us. So we give you thanks and God ask that God will bless and keep you in your way. Amen. Amen. Um, we do have one another brief announcement. Rory sent me an email or text this morning saying that the mass choir will meet briefly after church today. The mass choir will meet briefly at the church as we continue to pre prepare for our anniversary service on May 5th. That promises to be quite a day. Amen. Amen. Um, we are assured that um, our fellowship hall will be ready. Amen. Amen. And the closer we get to that, you'll we'll get more announcements of, about some of the things we are planning. But we hope that we see as many of you as possible on that anniversary Sunday. I know this is something that the session brought forward. Or we were asked, um, could we have communion on Easter Sunday? And so we, haven't, we are having communion today, and we'll have it next week. Because next week is the first Sunday, amen? amen. So um, it's a wonderful thing that we can celebrate this meal with each other, amen? And now I think that's all of the announcements. Now we're going to be blessed with our, our dance ministry coming forward. Amen. Today I want to preach from this subject, the spell breaker. The spell breaker. And I want you to look at somebody next to you. Look them eyeball to eyeball. And say, neighbor, yeah. the spell yeah. is broken yeah. over your life. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God, my God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to address this august body of believers who have assembled in this house not even knowing exactly what to expect but they came into the house of God to worship and to magnify you little did they know that they had a date with destiny today and that before they leave here strongholds and struggles will be pulverized up under the anointing of the Holy Ghost Father I give every demon every witch, every soothsayer, every root worker notice, you got 60 seconds to clear the building I feel a breakthrough about to hit this house from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Break every bondage, every curse, every hex, every spell, every demonic influence that has ever sabotaged the destiny of every daughter and every son in this house. In the name of Jesus, bondages over ministries, over businesses, over companies, over families, over mothers and daughters and fathers and sons and churches and cities will come against it now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this house. I thank you for what you're about to do. Shake this house. Shake it like it's a rug. Shake it like it's a garment. Pulverize it. Great God that you are. I thank you for what I feel right now. Have your way in this house. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. You may be seated in the presence of the most high God. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, you declare it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, there is power in the name, in the name of Jesus. We know where it is to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, sing to break every, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. <laughs> There's an army rising up. Yeah. To break every chain. 
from this subject, the spell breaker. The Two things I always forget. One, to remember the sick and shut in. That's more important than anything, especially on the day. And if they're still blessed to watch this service, then God is good. We thank God for them. Uh, the second thing is the Easter lilies. Um, they are beautifying the church this morning, but we ask that when the service is over, if you purchase them, to please pick them up. Take them with you today. Amen. 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 Now we will. Now this is the part of the service where we all can participate. Let us read our stewardship affirmation together. We believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for the sins of all humankind. We believe that the act of giving is an act of sharing in the ministry of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. We believe that it is our duty as Christians to strive to do the greatest rather than the least for the cause of Jesus Christ. Please give generously. Amen. <laughs>
always has been and always will be. So, Lord, we give you thanks on this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter Sunday, where you called your son and said, get up. And now, Lord, he is risen. And so we offer this, our offering to you, asking that you take it and use it according to your will. We thank you for those who have given here in the sanctuary today. We thank you for those who have given online. We thank you for those who have mailed in their givings. And we thank you for those who wanted to give today, Lord, but they couldn't. But they have offered an even greater gift. They have offered themselves to be of service to you. So all of these gifts we lift up in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord, who is our Savior, who is our brother and our friend. Let the whole church say, Amen. 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 Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the New Testament lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 and verses 12 through 13. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It hears all things, believe all things, hope, hope in all things, endures all things. Love never ends. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of all, is love. Amen. Our gospel lesson will be read by Reverend Palmore. Please stand if you are able. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of Matthew. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 11 and 16 through 20. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And as they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, for they will see me. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. 
When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and most of all, to the doing of his word. Amen. Amen. Morning, church. Whoa. Happy Easter. I've been making a mistake. I've been letting, saying that uh, this year is our 84th anniversary, but it's actually our 86th anniversary. So I've been corrected by my aunties and cousins in the church. <laughs> so it's the 86th anniversary we will be celebrating. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And pitied every groan. Long after. As I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and washed my grief away oh let my heart no more despair breath to pray oh I love the Lord he heard my cry
Why I have breath While I have breath While I have breath While I have breath to Let the church say amen. Amen. I love the Lord who heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his side. Thank you so much, Dwayne. It's always such a blessing when you can come before us and give your testimony and ours. Mm through song. Amen. Amen. Um, I was handed a brief note. There won't be a mass choir rehearsal this Sunday. It will be next Sunday. Amen. 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 Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we come on this resurrection Sunday and we give you thanks for this day, a day we hadn't seen before and one we shall never see again. So we lift up our hands and say, thank you, Lord, for one more day. And now, Lord, we enter into the preaching moment. So, Lord, I ask that you still all of our chaotic thoughts. Calm us down, but quicken our spirit so that we might feel you moving through these words. Lord, I ask that you reduce me so that I might not be seen so that you might be increased. I ask, Lord, that you give power to my voice, not because I need to be heard, but so that you may be heard, so that you may be felt, so that it is your Holy Spirit that moves us to do better each day. So, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let the entire church say amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Everybody here, I guess, has seen the movie The Black Panther, <clears throat> I guess. And when T'Challa comes home to be named king, he has to go through the ritual. And during the part of the ritual, he is asked, they ask if there's anyone who is challenging the throne. And Mbaku comes forward to challenge T'Challa. And so in the midst of that fight, Mbaku gets T'Challa in a chokehold, if I'm not mistaken. And you can hear in the background T'Challa's sister saying, get up, T'Challa. Get up. And then you hear over her, T'Challa's mother saying, show them who you are. Get up and show the people who you are. A little bit over 2,000 years ago, it was a Sunday morning just like today. And Jesus' lifeless body lay in a cold, borrowed tomb. Then God stepped in and did only what God can do. Early that morning, God went into that tomb and whispered in his son's ear, 
He said, son, it's time. Show them who you are. It's time to get up. And Jesus got up. It's Resurrection Sunday and Christ has risen. And because Christ has risen, beloved, know that we have been restored to God through what I call an act of radical redemption. An act of radical redemption. The ways and weapons of the world are hate and violence and nullification and death. But the tools of radical redemption are grace and mercy, compassion and life. Just as Jesus' life was a radical repudiation of the ways of the world, his resurrection was and remains a radical redeeming act of salvation. And redemption and salvation of God's way of saying, I love you. Amen. I love you. Always have and always will. Beloved, Easter is all about love. On this day, God turned a cold tomb into an incubator for new life. And what is life but an expression of love given form and meaning? What is it we read in John 3, 16? God so what? So God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son and that whosoever believes in him shall have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Spiritual immortality. When Jesus rose from that tomb, not, he not only conquered death, he showed us that because we believe in him and have put our faith and our trust in him, we too have been given the keys to unlock the doors to our own spiritual immortality. Again, whatsoever, whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life, spiritual immortality. Because Jesus got up, he became divine proof that death is no longer to be seen or understood or accepted as the period that ends one's life. But the comma between this life and our immortality, our eternal life with God. All because God, what? Loves us. What is it Sam and Dave said? Didn't have to do it, but you did, but you did, but you did. And I thank you. Beloved, love is the creative force and the centered and focused purpose at the center of all creation. Paul reminds us of this when he says in, in 1 Corinthians that we heard today, if we have all knowledge and prophetic power, if we can move mountains, if we give ourselves up to die so that we might boast, but do not have love for anything or anybody, then we are nothing. In the end, he says, love bears all things, believes all things and endures all things because love never dies. Jesus' resurrection is the ultimate sign of God's love for us all. But his resurrection, beloved, also speaks to how we should live and have our being in the living of these days while we yet live. Jesus' resurrection is important because it is also a testimony to how he lived. I'll say that again. Mm -hmm. The resurrection is important because it also is a testimony to how he lived. Amen. Today calls us to consider that Jesus was also raised because the kind of life that he lived was worth resurrecting. Mm -hmm. Beloved, when you walk in the fullness of who you are, 
when you when who you are is centered in a love for yourself and others that is not haughty or arrogant but is humble and selfless when your living example when when your living examples are spiritual and moral integrity centered in God God will not let your life and what it stood for be tossed atop the bones of the misbegotten and the forgotten. Resurrection speaks of God's love and of God's righteousness. Crucifixion, however, speaks to the depravity and fear of empires that will do anything to maintain power and control. Political and territorial empires. Religious empires that have their own power to protect and maintain. Economic empires that create caste systems that cater to the rich and well-connected but care little about the poor and the marginalized. All of these are empires of the world. God was not going to let who Jesus was and the kind of life he lived be left and forgotten in a borrowed tomb reserved for the ruins of shattered empires. Jesus' resurrection was God's radical repudiation of empire and imperialism. His resurrection was God's radical repudiation of greed inherent in abusive power. His resurrection was God's radical repudiation of the empire of religious imperialism. Don't think that churches don't practice imperialism. Sometimes churches are out to build empires of land and power and money and care less for the souls that they should be walking with. Jesus' resurrection was a radical repudiation of empires of religious imperialism and its coveted hierarchy and power and dominion. Jesus' resurrection was God's radical repudiation of the dominion of hatred, fear, and self-loathing, all of whom are the children of evil and the architects of death. Today, in the bright and luminescent light of resurrection, we are called to be something else. We are called to take up the mantle of life that is born of a perfect love that avails us to the redeeming power of grace. Jesus' resurrection testifies to the truth that God's grace really is amazing. Amen. That not only does it find those who are lost, it saves those who are among the walking dead. We are called to repudiate the albatross of hate and put on the mantle of love. We are called to repudiate the burdens of selfishness and put on the mantle of selflessness. We are called to repudiate exclusion and put on the mantle of inclusion because this is what Jesus told us to do when he said, whosoever will, let them come. We are called to repudiate those things that prohibit us from loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Jesus' resurrection was God's love radically intersecting the fabric of humanity, a radical love that can overcome the world. Jesus' resurrection tells us that how he lived Example, the scriptures that testified about righteousness, that, that whoever or whatsoever is born of God and God is love and God is righteousness and all are born of God. Whatsoever, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. On Resurrection Sunday, today, Jesus overcomes the world. Jesus is a righteous person. A righteous person born of God's love and saved by the love of God through Jesus Christ. A righteous person then overcomes a world where greed is lifted up 
as holy scripture, where greed is lifted up as holy and moral. A righteous person steps into the gap of the moral failings of a world that blames the poor for their poverty. I am so tired of hearing rich people telling poor people to pull up their bootstraps when they create a system that gives most people no boots at all. A righteous person steps into the gap of a moral failings of a world that blame the poor for their poverty. That uplift, that uplifts the rich because of their wealth and worships the affluent and well-connected because of their power. More people chase power than they do love because they almost think that they're the same. A righteous person overcomes the world because he desires to be on God's side and not on the sidelines. Why? God is always sided with those who have not rather than with those who have but will not share. A righteous person or a righteous people overcome the world because the world lives in them and not just on their tongue. Again, we know people who can quote the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But they don't really walk the talk. I've seen a lot of folk who don't claim to be Christians who are closer to Christ than mm -hmm. folk who go to church every Amen. Sunday. A righteous people overcome the world because they are doers of the word and not just hearers. A righteous person overcomes the world because he would rather have his hopes dashed than his fears confirmed. Now, that's a hard thing to swallow, to, to rather accept having your hopes dashed. But to me, that's greater than living in a world where everything you fear is confirmed. Why? Because hope in hope, there is found God's love, and God's love is the hope of the world. Finally, a righteous person does not seek the living among the dead. As the women approach Jesus' tomb and enter it, in Mark's version, it says they, they encounter two angels who ask them this very question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why? With this question, the angels challenge the women and us to see life in a new transcendent way, in a new spiritually transformational way. We have been called to pick up our own crosses and follow Jesus to see where the end will be. Jesus left the power of death in the grave and never picked it up again. So why are you picking up your tombs? Why are you carrying your graves? Why are you carrying all of the things that want to keep you buried? When he told us in Luke 9, 60, to let the dead bury the dead, he was telling us that we must let go of the accumulation of dead things and dead people mm. Mm. Come on now. who inhabit our Come living. On. And as we are called to rise out of our self-inflicted tombs, if death has been swallowed up, if we live in Christ and Christ lives in us, then we must also stop speaking death into our lives. Thank you and began speaking resurrection into our living. When we speak life into our living, we adopt a new language that is centered and powered by one thing, love. Amen. Speaking death into your life dries up living waters and gets you drunk mm. on the belief that there is no hope. Speaking resurrection, however, Speaking resurrection into, our, into your living changes old wineskins into new wineskins where new wine is poured, plucked from the fruit of the vine that is Jesus, God's greatest gift of love. 
Death bars the way to life. Death bars the way to life. But resurrection makes a way out of no way and reassures you that if Jesus goes with you, you can go anywhere. Speaking death opens the floodgates of hell to pour darkness and evil into your life. And there can be no joy, no love, where these beasts find a home. Speaking resurrection into your life turns darkness to light, doubt into faith, despair into hope. Resurrection opens spiritually blind eyes. We know that Jesus made blind people see. But the people who could already see, he was just trying to open their spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. Speaking resurrection into your life turns darkness into light. Speaking resurrection into your life opens spiritually blind eyes to see the hand of God at work and gives life to spiritually crippled souls that have been hobbled and broken by a world that worships death. As soon as, as soon as humankind finds something good, we find a way to turn it into a weapon. Mm -hmm. We find a way to make starving a weapon. We're going to starve them out. Now they'll come to our terms. Isn't it wonderful that the birds are yes. singing this morning? Oh my God. Yes. 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 I think this singing. is the first Sunday I've heard the birds. Amen. Yes. Hey, resurrection works. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Speaking death opens the floodgates of, of hell to pour darkness into your life. Resurrection opens spiritually blind eyes. Resurrection power changes a funeral dirge into a song of celebration and praise. Hallelujah. Resurrection power finds lost sheep and restores broken lives and brings prodigal sons and prodigal daughters home again. Yes. Beloved, this is Resurrection Sunday. And through it all, because we learn to trust in Jesus, because we learn to trust in God, we have been gifted with resurrection yes. power. A power that really can break every chain. Yes. Break every chain that holds us back or roots us into something that would not have us grow. Resurrection power tells us it's a new season. And it's a new day. And now is not the time to turn and look back at what we foolishly believe are our best days. Whenever we think that what we have done is the best that's going to happen, then waking up the next day is fruitless. Amen. Resurrection power says what happened yesterday happened yesterday. But I'm giving you power to live in this day. Is Resurrection Sunday. And this, this is the day the Lord has made. Yes, this choice. is the day God has Thank restored you, God. life to a dying world. Yes. So I don't know about you, but hmm. I'm not looking back to yesterday. Amen. I'm not yearning for what was. I dream about being younger, but I'm not looking forward to going back. <laughs> All I really want to do is, li is live this day today. For it is all that God has promised to me. It is all that God has promised any of us. I want to be better today than I was yesterday. And I want, I, I want the Jesus who got up out of that grave to walk with me. Because that Jesus said he'd go with me all the way. And because Jesus got up, the question that needs answering isn't why seek the living among the dead, 
The question now should be, have you been redeemed? Mm. And you can proclaim as the spiritual says, certainly, Lord. Because early one Sunday morning, well, God's redeeming love whispered in his son's ear and said, son, get up. Yes. Show the world who you are. Get up. Beloved, it's Resurrection Sunday. And you and I woke up this morning clothed in our right minds because Jesus got up. We woke up this morning in our right minds because our mamas and daddies told us there'd be days when the world would rather see us dead than alive. But they also told us about a man named Jesus who got up and proclaimed that death ain't got nothing on me today. I woke up this morning in my right mind because with her last words to me in face to face, my mama said three words, Jean, trust Jesus. She said to trust him because she and my daddy loved the Lord. So I woke up this morning knowing that he lives because early one Sunday morning, Jesus got up. Somebody got to say amen. amen. We woke up because Jesus got up. We all woke up this morning on that day that Jesus got up because Jesus and God love us. They love us with a love that lasts forever. I call it God loves us with a Stevie Wonder kind of love. As around the sun, the earth and those sheep revolving, and the rosebud knows to bloom in early May. Just as hay knows laws are cured, you can rest your mind assured. I'll be loving you always. As today can reveal the mysteries of tomorrow, that with passing, We'll grow older every day. Just as all this born is new, you know what I say is true. I'll be loving you always. God wants us to love with a Jesus kind of love. God loves us with a Stevie Wonder kind of love. A kind of love that lasts until the rainbows burn the stars out of the sky until the oceans cover every mountain high. That's the kind of love that raised Jesus from the grave this morning. The kind of love that will last until dolphins fly and parrots live at sea. The kind of love that says it will be around until you dream that you are you and I am me. God's love, Jesus' love, resurrection power love, a love that is here until the day is night and night becomes the day until the trees and seas dress up and fly away. That's the kind of love that rolls out of the tomb this morning. That's the kind of love that God surrounds us with. That's the kind of love that God wants us to walk in every day until, until, the end of the age until the day that eight times eight times eight is four until the day that is the day that is no more until the day the earth starts turning life from left to right or right to left until the earth and sea and sun deny itself until Mother Nature says her work is through, until the day that you are me and I am you. That's the kind of love that happened on Resurrection Sunday. And always and forever love. Beloved, it's Resurrection Sunday. And God's redeeming love declares to us that death ain't high enough. Death ain't low enough. Death ain't wide enough to keep God's love from you. It's Resurrection Sunday. God's radical love with resurrection power 
has repudiated death, canceled sin, and says, my children, rise, stand up, rise, and show the world who you are. Show the world who you are. Show the world who you are. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, I'm about to skip something. I really am. The doors of the church are open now. There might be someone here who wants to know better this always love. Who wants to get to know someone who will love them until the rainbows do burn the stars out of the sky. So we open the doors of the church as we hear our hymn of invitation. Lord, I want to be a Christian. I just don't want to be a person. I want to be a Christian because Christians follow Jesus and Jesus showed us how to live. As we hear our hymn of invitation, if there's anyone who wants to come forward to accept Christ in his or her life, to be a part of this congregation or who just wants to have somebody walk with them, now is your chance. come and we give you thanks for just one more day. A day we hadn't seen before and one we shall never see again. So we just say thank you. We thank you for our mothers and fathers and the ancestors who have gone on before who whisper in our ears every morning, get up on whose shoulders we stand. We thank you for our children, the young people whom we must trust one day to lead us and guide us. We ask, that we, we ask that you give them an extra measure of your grace and your wisdom. We thank you for this church that has indeed been serving you for 86 years. And Lord, we just ask that through your mercy, through your grace, through your power, through your love, that the doors of this church will remain open another 86 years. Lord, we come and we ask that you send this resurrection power down on this earth where we try to, to buy peace with war while we try to fix hunger with starvation while we try to, to include people by excluding where we try to say we love you, but we hate everybody else. Lord, we ask that you send your resurrection power 
to speak to the leaders of the world and let them know that you are still in control, that the whole world belongs in your hands, not ours. So hear our prayer, Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us your peace. This is our prayer, and we pray it in the master's name of Jesus, who is our Lord, who is our Savior, who is our brother, and our friend. Let the church say amen. 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 Keep playing. I want you to look outside for me. Yes. Those weren't open like this this morning. No, they weren't. They were not open like this this morning. Most of them were closed. God is right. I'm so thankful that I'm loved. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. My heart is so happy. Please stand if you are able so that we may recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in according with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Um, I just have a quick announcement. Someone, um, a Jeep with jersey plates is blocking someone across the street. If that is your vehicle, um, a Jeep with jersey plates is blocking someone outside. It may not be us, but if it is, amen. Now let us prepare for our communion.
Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Beloved, as we approach this sacred table on this Resurrection Sunday, we are filled with hope and wonder. For Jesus Christ has done what he said he would do. Return to us. Let the church say amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, our faith teaches us that this table, like the blood of Christ, never loses its power. No matter where we are. For it is sanctified not by where we partake of this meal, but by our faith in the presence of the Holy Spirit transforming it from its common use to its divine purpose. This is the Lord's table, and all are invited to just choose a seat and sit down. This is the Lord's table, and we are invited not because we are more deserving of this invitation, but because the invitation is open to all. This is the Lord's table, and we come not because we must, but because we may. We are here not because we are strong, but because we need God's strength to continue to see us through the living of these days. We come not because we are worthy of God's goodness, but because we desire God's mercy and grace. We come not because we are satisfied, but because in our emptiness we seek to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Come. Together, let us break the bread of life and drink from the cup of blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the, to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. <clears throat> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, we bless you, O Lord, and give you thanks as we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. This is our sacrifice of praise. With your Holy Spirit, consecrate these elements. With the anointing of this meal, do a new thing in us and with us. Through this meal, make us one with Christ and with all who share in this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, and inspire us to love so that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. These and all things we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is now ready.
night of his arrest. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and he broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved, ministering in Christ's name, I give you the bread of life. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Beloved, ministering in Christ's name, I give you the cup of blessing. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this Resurrection Sunday, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Savior. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, so that we may be filled with the power of his eternal light and life, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Now let us prepare for our closing hymn. We do want to remind you that if uh, the lilies are here, and I, I started to feel my sciences just a few minutes ago, but um, the lilies are here for you to take home with you. And there are things up here for the children, correct? For anybody who wants it. But make sure the children get theirs first. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Again, we want to thank all of you for being with us today. It's been a glorious day so far. Yes. Amen. Amen. Who's cooking Thanksgiving? Um, um, Thanksgiving Easter. <laughs> Thanksgiving Easter. <laughs> Who's cooking Easter dinner today? One. I know two people are. I know Dwayne's family is cooking enough to feed three churches. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, go forth in this day and just enjoy it and share it with your loved ones. Now, all who are able, please rise and join us in singing our closing hymn. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along this narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. I serve, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know. Yeah.
to be fit for myself to know. I don't want to come to the setting sun hating myself for the things I've done. Beloved, what would Jesus have us do today? He would have us to know that he lives. And he would have us to hear this call Get up. Show the world who you are in Christ. Amen. So go forth in the world and do what is good. Do what is just. Do what brings peace. And do all things with love. Love for yourself. Love for each other. And love for God. May your struggles keep you near. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles in the way. May your May your struggles, may your struggles keep you near May your troubles show that you may your battles Give somebody a holy hug, a holy handshake, a holy pound, and a holy kiss, and share the peace of God.
let the church sing.